Good morning. Today is Sunday, November the 27th, 2022, 6.56 a.m. Um, this is going to be 1 John chapter 2. It says, um, My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. So that, that word little children is actually an infant, plural figuratively, darlings, Christian converts, little children. So he's speaking to um, to the children in faith um, because the, the more um, mature Christians should already know this, know better, <laughs> not, to, not to sin. Uh, that's just, uh, so he's obviously speaking to the little children, <laughs> the converts, um, which are born again Christians who have just uh, come into the faith. And he's, he's reminding them not to sin. So he's saying, my little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. Again, from yesterday, it was uh, that sin word it was missing the mark I had described on um, what it means to miss the mark like in a race there's a mark on the road and go past it or through it because you're going too fast anyhow it says if any man and if any man sin uh, which is so when you miss the mark what happens is you're trespassing into other territory that you're not supposed to be in so so when you're when you're on a race, there's a mark that shows that you have to turn left. And when you turn and when you don't turn left because of whatever reason you're looking down or you're you're not looking, keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, you, you you go past the mark, and then you become you become and then you're in uh, territory you're trespassing. You become in the territory where you're trespassing, which is which means there's an open door. The devil, he's waiting in those territories. The devil's waiting where the where the marker is, where the marker is that says to turn left, where you have to, or to turn left and to, to turn right in order to stay on that narrow road. He's waiting right on the other side of that marker, and then you become, and then you become, and then you become trust. You're a trespasser, um, just like the signs that say trespassers will be shot. Well, it's the same thing with the devil. He's like, oh yeah. You want to keep your eyes off Jesus? You want to you want to you want to miss the mark? You want to trespass and come over here into my little territory? Well, come on, come over here to this wide road. Let me show you. Let me show you who you really are. Is what the devil wants to tell you. He wants to tell you who you aren't instead of who you are. Because he's a liar and the, and the and the father of lies. So you need to stay stay within the boundaries within the boundaries of. The narrow road so we don't miss the mark and go over into into trespass, trespass into territory that's not ours um, so it says if any man sin we have an advocate which is um, a com comforter intercessor jesus with the father jesus um, christ the righteous if we sin we have an advocate and so a lot of people, when they sin, they don't go to the advocate. They don't go to the counselor. They go to their flesh. And they go to the world. And that's why he's saying, he's talking to the little children, that when you when you fall short, or when you, when you, when you sin, that we have an advocate with the Father. And the advocate, the counselor, he is available 24-7 to, um, to, to put us back on the right track. And he is the propitiation, um, atonement for our sins. So not only is he, not only is he our counselor, but he's our he is our the atonement for our sins. So when we go to him, we're automatically um, affirmed. We're automatically affirmed as soon as we sin and we go to him, then we're affirmed because we're going to him, and he is. 
He is the He is the um, the atonement. He's the one that excuses us, excuses our sins, if we go to Him. We turn turn from our sin, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So that's for anybody that would anybody that would go to the cross, go to Jesus, go to the Holy Spirit, in uh, and godly sorrow, God will forgive you of your sins. And hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. So if we keep His commandments, that is a if is a condition <laughs> if if is a condition um it's just so it so is for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him that's another condition these are conditions if we would do these things that he promises that um certain things so he's saying that john it was it was the beloved john um Jesus, he, John was was called. He, Jesus called John his the beloved because John heard and it had ears to hear and bear witness of what Jesus. Because he, they were very close, John and Jesus. I think they're actually related. Were they related? No. Okay, maybe not. But they're. But he he really saw him as as someone who was just. Like he was related to him, he thought he looked at between him. He called him beloved, so he really he really had love for this man. And hereby, we do know that we know him if, 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 if we keep his commandments. He that saith, "I know him," so you, if you say you know him, and you're keeping not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. You know what? I used to actually think that it said that if you say that you're, that there is no sin in you, then you are a liar, and the truth is not in you. Does it say that in the Bible? If it's, if it, because this is this is contradicting, this is contradicting what it says. It says I'm gonna look it up. Give me one second, you guys. No, no, oh, it's coming up. It's actually in the same. <laughs> it's in the same chapter. Okay, so it says here. So he's going to go on to say later. It's going to sound like he contradicted himself. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not his. Sinned is is past tense. Sinned, s i n n e d. Sinned, past tense. Sin, sin is is present tense. So those of you who want to say. Oh, well, if you say there's, if you're not a sinner, yeah, no, I was a sinner because sinned is sinned in the past. We all were sinners in the past. And we're gonna we're gonna hit that hit that verse here in a few in a few minutes. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And what is a liar? Look at a liar. Look at the liar. Look at the Hebrew. Look at that. Look at that. That, see that thing on the Hebrew underneath? Liar looks like a pitchfork. <laughs> That's crazy. A liar is a falsifier. <laughs> a falsifier. Um, uh, someone that utters untruth or attempts to de deceive by falsehood. Um, but whosoever keepeth his word, to keep his word means to guard the word. How do we guard it? By not allowing, um, by having boundaries, by knowing how to have boundaries and put up walls to, that would separate uh, their spiritual walls, right? That would separate us from the world. Um, keeping our eye upon Jesus that would prevent us, which is properly to prevent escaping. Because, um, see, the devil, he... He will make a way of escape. 
the devil will make a will make a way of escape for us. Um, if we're not putting a boundary up, a spiritual boundary, he'll hey come over this way, hey come over this way, come on. He'll, he'll he'll make an escape just as Jesus will make an escape for us to to be free from the devil. The devil will also make an escape for us to get away from God, and he and he he does it all the time. He doesn't want us. He doesn't want us under the shadow of the Almighty wings. He wants us. He wants us under His control. But whosoever keepeth His word in Him, verily is the love of God perfected. So if you're keeping His word, that's the love of God that's perfected. So, so when you're keeping the law, when you're keeping the the word. When you're keeping the word, when you're when you're when you're a doer of the word, you're being perfected in Christ. You're being perfected in Him. Um, so, so what would happen when you, when you're not keeping the word? You would your testimony would when you're not being perfected in, in the love of God. Is what's happening? And it shows that there's there's uh, there's error. You're in error. So, we need to keep His word. Which is to love one another as Christ has loved the church. Hereby know we that we are in him. So so people will know us by our love. Not by our... People aren't going to know us by our... Hey, you didn't do this for me. And hey, you didn't do that for me. And hey, you... You, uh... <laughs> you were supposed to do this for me. And you were supposed to do that for me. Um... And I, and I could repent of that myself. We get into, sometimes we get into, uh, we feel like it's because somebody promised us something that they have to follow through with it. Well, the only thing that was, was promised and that was followed through was Jesus going to the cross for our sins and dying on the cross. He went all the way to the, to, he, the Bible says that, well, yeah, while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. So that's the only thing that's that really God will never leave us nor forsake us. Then that's the truth, and we can call Him on that. We don't even have to call Him on that. If you're walking in love, you're, it's, it's going to be manifest that everything that He says will come to pass. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you. He says, "Check this out, verse seven, brethren. I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye have had from the beginning." The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past. See, the darkness is past. Um, past means uh, that we've departed from it. That we've uh, we, we've been, we've been it's past. We've been We've departed from the old thing, and the true light now shineth. So when you when you preach, when you preach, anybody can preach a good sermon if they know the word of God. I could preach a good sermon of hell. I could I, mean, I could preach a good sermon of uh, of the of the of the devil the devil Bible satanic Bible. If I studied the Satanic Bible and I knew it and I read and I read it, I bet you I could preach a good, a great Satanic message. Sorry. If I if I read to Time Magazine, I could preach a great message from the Time Magazine. I could preach anything that you read and you have knowledge of, but when it becomes real, is when you um, is when you're doing it. It's like, so how people will know us is by our fruit. Just because you can preach a good message doesn't mean that you're, that the truth, that, that you're, they're living it out. And we have to, we have to judge our brothers by their fruit. Um, and then we also have to have compassion and mercy toward them when they don't, sh when they don't bear fruit or show it. But you know that they, that they love God and you know what they're trying to, trying to be disciples and you see that they're falling way short of the, that they're 
it may seem like they're, they're doing it to, to pee you off or whatever. Don't worry about it. Just pray for them. And just don't don't show anger to their to their lack of fruit. <laughs> don't look at the tree and say, well, darn it. <laughs> Why aren't you there? Why aren't you hanging on the tree? You're supposed to be hanging on the tree. What happened? Because <laughs> that's the accuser of the brethren. And that's not of the will of God. So we can't look at the tree and curse at the tree. <laughs> we can't curse the tree. We can we can we can bind bind the demon that would cause the tree not to bear fruit. <laughs> but we don't curse the tree because we want to water we want to water the tree. And the Bible says that we're Apollos waters and Paul plants. It doesn't say that Apollos curses and uh, Paul uh, finds faults. <laughs> It says, Paul waters, Apollos plants. So we have to be planters and sowers. So, so we could, God can reap a good harvest. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. So he that loveth his brother abideth, which means um, to stay in the light. He that Love with his brother, endures, endures all things. The Bible says, the love says, endures all things, uh, does not keep record of wrong. Ooh, man, help me, Jesus. I got to repent of all that. In Jesus' name. Um, we need to stand for, stand for our brothers and sisters, um, to tarry for them, with them, alongside them. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness. Yikes. Uh, so you can hate. How are you going to hate something? Hate. What is hate? Hate is, is an extension of the devil. Hate is to detest. Persecute. Ooh, persecute. Especially to persecute. So to hate something is to persecute it. That's why the Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. If we're in Christ, we can't be persecuted. We can. We can be persecuted for righteousness. But the Bible says that blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. Okay. Um, okay. And knoweth not whither he goes. Wait. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness <clears throat> knoweth not whither he goeth because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. That's what the darkness does is it blinds darkness. You can't see in darkness. Ooh, wow. I didn't even realize that. So when you're in a dark room, this is so simple but yet so profound. So when you're in a dark room, you can't see nothing. Right? You turn the light on and you can see. <laughs> So, if you want to see what the Spirit of the Lord is trying to tell, reveal and tell you in your life, if you want provision and you want, you, you feel like God's not talking to you, it's probably because your your lights are your light is dim. <laughs> you, need, you need to expose whatever is darkness and bring it to the light. Amen. Amen. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake. Stop. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop moping around. Just repent and move on. Worship. Worship. Move on. Repent means to have a change of direction. It means to get back on the path. Come back out of the uh, trespass. You're, you're, you're. If you're in sin, you're trespassing. The Bible says that sins are trespasses. Trans trespassing is sin. So when you trespass, is when you go onto someone else's property that doesn't belong to Jesus. Because when you that is a part of trespassing is your Jesus has given us a narrow road to stay on. If we get off the narrow road, we're trespassing, and then we're in the devil's territory. I write into you fathers because I write into you fathers 
because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. See, he's saying this because people, because they have actually overcome. See, that's what we're supposed to be, overcomers. Overcomers, not, we're not sinners. We were sinners, past tense. Pretense, we're, we're not sinners. We're not sinless, no, but we're not sinners either. We're being perfected, right? That's what we just read. We're being perfected. How are we perfected? By not sinning. By staying on the course, and getting off the trespass course, and getting on on Jesus course. Amen. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If you have any love toward worldly things, it's not saying that you're not a Christian. It's just saying that you need to cut them from your life, and you cut them. You should cut them all in one shot. But if you can't, then just Every day, cut something out of your life that needs to be cut out. Keep cutting it out, cutting it out. Let, let the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will trim and cut and prune everything that's not of Him, so that you could uh, bear fruit worthy of repentance. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Desire, lust is to, to desire something that's not of God. Anything could be to desire, to desire something more than you would desire God. So, oh my gosh, I really, really want that. Well, do you talk like that about God? Oh my gosh, I really, really want God. If you don't, then that's you're lusting out for something. Oh my gosh, wow, that's amazing. Well, are you putting, are you saying, wow, that's amazing. God is amazing because he did, he, he created that. Or are you just saying, wow, that's amazing. Are you not giving him glory? And the flesh is just what we need to, to, uh, to survive um, in the world, to be lights to the world. The spirit should be shining out of our flesh. As a light that would bring truth in the darkness and the lust of the eyes is um, anything that your eyes are lusting after um, there's envy jealous glance a jealous glance is, is I don't even know that as the lust of the eyes if you're giving a look to somebody like out of jealousy and you're looking at them and they because you're jealous and that's a problem too. That's the lust of the eyes. Because we're we're not obviously seeing ourselves for who we are. Instead we're we're trying to we're trying to um we're 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 seeing ourselves in somebody else's eyes. And and that's not what God wants. God wants to see us in in his eyes, not in somebody else's eyes. We God has created everyone individually and has a plan and a purpose that's different from every every person has a plan every different person plan and purpose and destiny not destiny but plan and purpose is is, is different God, you know like my wife told me the other day you know we're not called to a certain ministry we're not called to help, to do something that they're doing but we're we are going the same path we're going the same direction so um don't 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 allow other people's ministries and and plans of God, that God has for them to deter you from from your plan and your His destiny over your life. Just keep doing what God told you to do. And if you're on the same path with the, these people, with the Christians, and then, then everything's gonna God will use you in your time. God will use you. And the pride of life is not of the Father. Uh, pride, boasting, confidence, self-confidence. So we, have, so pride is self-confidence, confidence in yourself. 
oh, well, I did this, I did that, and you don't give God glory. It's pride. But it's of the world. And the world and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Um, and Antichrist is uh, is just an opponent of the Messiah. As an opponent, it's somebody that's in the ring, trying to trying to trying to trying to beat up God, and it ain't gonna ha ever happen. The only way God can be beat up is if if you put your guard down. If you put your guard down, then then the devil's gonna jack you up, he's gonna knock you out. You can't put your guard down. You gotta you gotta be trained. You gotta be a trained trained soldier. That can stand in the ring with the devil and he will bow down, not the other way around. We don't bow down to the devil, he bow downs to us. He actually forfeits the fight. As soon as he walks in the ring, he, he acknowledges the power of God that you walk in and he turns to the referee and says, I'm cool, I don't want to fight. This guy's gonna whoop me. That's how that's how we're supposed to look. Because of of of, of the hope. And of the who who lives with us, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he 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 sees Jesus, and he knows the devil knows who the devil knows who uh, who is uh, walking holy unto God and who is walking righteous. He he doesn't mess with those people as much as he does people that aren't aren't the people that are claiming to be Christians. He's gonna he's gonna try to mess with them all. Oh, he'll get in the ring with them all day long. He'll actually he'll make fun of him in the ring. He'll slap him around a little bit, you know, laugh at you, slap you upside the head, kick you in the butt. And then he got all his little demons in the audience going, yeah. <laughs> Whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would not doubt. They have, would have, if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. See, that's another thing is we need to continue, continue with, continue tarrying, continue uh, walking, continue, uh, continue walking with Jesus, with the flock continue 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 walking don't get off don't get off off track off track let me take a few breaths here let me take let me I, I, I can't keep up no if you can't keep up then t tell someone on the, that you're on the road with say hey this is a this is hard I, I need help can you help me and then they'll help you they'll help let to, to help car uh, carry the burden of whatever it is that's weighing you down but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. Unction. I've used that word before by the Holy Spirit. And Okay, so the unction means uh, uh, the unbent or smearing. <laughs> you have the endowment of the Holy Spirit. <sighs> wow, okay. So God has gives me an unction to do something. When he gives you an unction to do something, but he says, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. If you're walking in, if you're walking in holiness of God, you're gonna you're gonna know exactly what you're what you're supposed to be doing. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. So we have to make sure that there's nothing in us that the devil can accuse us of. He, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. So anyone that denies Jesus Christ as the Messiah, he is of the Antichrist. Period. Well, oh, you're, so you're telling me that that if I don't if I don't acknowledge your God as the Messiah, then I'm of the Antichrist. Yes, definitely, because that's what John says right here. 
and, and every word is true from the Bible. So if you're of the Antichrist, and you can't deny, you can't uh, confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you are of the Antichrist. Whosoever denieth the Son, or maybe you're just in denial, or you're just being rebellious, but either way, you're, the Spirit is Antichrist Spirit. Whosoever denieth the Son, the Son, the same hath not the Father. Whoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. So, like the other day, I met this guy on the road. He, he didn't. He, he he didn't. He acknowledged God, but he denied Jesus. That was that was what happened in the video that I met this guy. He no, he was acknowledging God, but he denied Jesus. So that's also, but he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. So we have to remain in him. That's that's what it's all about, remaining in him and continuing to walk with Jesus so that we can win the race. It's a race. It's not, it's, you can't, we have to stay on the on the course. We have to stay on the narrow path so that we can finish the race. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Seduce you. It's, it's the seducer wants us to wander, wander, wander from, go astray, and leave the narrow path. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and Ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that whenever he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. So that's um, to abide in Jesus because the Bible says that, um, that he, he, he will say to many, depart from me, I never knew you. Because you decided to get off the track and, and trust in yourself and not trust in God. If you know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. So we need to be righteous in him. Not self-righteousness, but put on the cloak of righteousness. Walk in righteousness, walk in power, walk in love, walk in forgiveness, walk on the narrow path, don't trespass onto other paths, stay firmly rooted and grounded in love, forgiveness, prayer, be accountable, go to church, read your Bible, be a doer of the word. Amen.